What's up guys, this is Butcher. In this episode I'm going to talk about blocking, uh, the importance of lane control in games, and I'm going to talk not only uh, mid, but I'm going to talk about safe lane, off lane, and how lane blocking literally wins lanes. It's like the most underrated thing that most people don't know about. Um, okay, so to begin I'm just going to show how to block from middle. You, uh, you have to have a space here in between you and a building to block well. Yeah. See how the creeps go to one side and then you can block uh, whatever. And what I like to do, I like to block to here and preferably I like to get the range creep to go first. So, I mean, right now it's not happening, but basically you want to get the range creep or if uh, the range creep is not in the front, you want to get like another creep. Uh, just to go in front and you want to split the lane and you want to have one creep in front so that creep dies first and your lane pushes like if you split the lane it doesn't matter if you block let one creep pass through uh, preferably it's one because that creep dies the first and then uh, there's four creeps that are against three of your creeps and uh, the opponent's lane will push and that is very very good because the closer you are to your tower, especially if you're a melee, uh, if you're mid, like Pudge for example, you are closer to your tower so you can either hook under tower or you can like kill creeps over here and be safe from the enemy's harassment because if he is here and he A clicks on you, the tower is going to start attacking him or her or whatever. So it's it's in your advantage to have the... the the lane over here or if you like lane against ember spirit who's very good against pudge because of his uh shield uh if you're here right and he start and he activates flame guard here and chases you all the way to here you're going to take a ton of damage and he's going to shackle you in between here and you're probably going to die but if the creeps are here then you're so much more safe like he can't chase you under tower because the tower do physical amounts of damage and you're pretty much safe so lane control is super important literally if your lane gets a shadow fiend as pudge or a queen of pain as pudge and you fuck up your block like you let all of the creeps through you fail it completely or you don't block it at all and the creeps are over here or the opponent lets one creep through and you don't the lane will push towards their side and they can keep the creeps over here indefinitely basically and then they can um, choose to either uh, kill the creeps really fast and snowball the creep wave over here and control the runes if it's like a co-op that has AoE and Pudge doesn't have AoE or a, a Shadow Fiend and a sh like a lot of the times people don't like when the, when the, the creeps are over here you could play really aggressively with Pudge but when the creeps are over here you can't really be too aggressive because he's so close to his tower like you hook him to here right and then he just walks like this and you're not gonna do enough damage to actually kill him you're gonna chase him under tower you're gonna die because the tower is gonna do a lot of damage but if you hook somebody here there's so many more chances that you're actually gonna kill that person just chase him with rot and they can't do anything about it okay so that was mid and uh, I prefer uh, but the downside to that, I mean, this is very rare cases. If you get super, super good at blocking, and you block to here, and you don't let any creeps through, you block the entire creep wave, and you don't split it at all. You block it to here, then the opponent creeps are getting attacked by the tower, and your creep wave actually pushes because you block too well, and your opponent block too shitty. Sometimes I do this on purpose, don't block at all. If I know that the opponent's super good blocker, I know he's going to block to here, the tower is going to kill all of my creeps, and the wave is going to push here, and he's going to have a ton of creeps and then I'm gonna farm them all under tower and because you're pudge you can last it better under tower with rot than any other hero because you have so much more damage and the rot is free of mana if you're like a really low damage hero like a meepo it's hard to last it under tower but if you're pudge and you get good with pudge you can last it a lot under the tower I uh, hope you get what I'm saying lane control is mostly known in the safe lane so for example you have a void and there's like an opponent like Timbersaw or Bristleback or something if the crate wave is here uh, then the safe lane void can farm and if there's like a lion support one support can zone out the bristleback or the timbersaw at very very low levels and the the timbersaw can't cross this line uh, or he's gonna get like attacked by lion and the void can jump him so he's not even gonna get experience for the creeps and that's the most important part during your safe lane the void gets all the experience the lion can pull or the lion can harass and the bristleback or the timbersaw get nothing literally nothing not a, a single experience of a creep and they get super under leveled and then the void can solo them because he's like two levels higher than them and that that's that's fine and dandy but if the bristleback blocks here to here and he splits the creep wave don't worry about blocking it uh, from here to here it doesn't really matter but if you split the creep wave and you ward this spot 
um, the opponent lane is going to push. Like, you're going to have one creep go here, and the four creeps from Radiant side are going to go here, and they're going to kill this dire creep, and then they're going to fight here, the rest of the three creeps of the dire side, and the, uh, the lane is going to push. And that's what you want if you're an off laner. You want the creeps closer to your tower so you can get experience at least. If you don't get last hits, it doesn't matter. You need to get experience. It's much better than having the creeps over here and you never, ever, ever going to even get experience for any of the creeps. And that brings me to my other point. Deny as early as possible. So, for example, your blocks are equal, right? Uh, or it doesn't matter. Even... Uh, suppose we're past the blocking stage, right? And the creeps just meet here and nobody's blocked them or anything and the creeps are dying at the same time. You want to deny the creeps as fast as possible. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So like here, I'm trying to deny this creep from 50% HP. You can deny creeps if they're 50% HP or lower. You can take advantage of this. So you start denying. So look, my, my creep wave is pushing, right? I'm trying to deny as much as possible. Right now it's pushing because there's two range creeps. Once you have two range creep in a lane, it's going to push like really hardcore because the range creeps do more damage than the melee creeps. The range creeps don't have as much HP, but... I mean, if they're not getting attacked because they're in the back, they're, they're like snowballing, right? So I'm trying to deny as much as possible. And it's also a good habit, very good habit, to just deny almost every single creep. Um, like, don't slack off and don't just focus on last inning creeps. Focus on denying creeps, too. Like, like, you know? Like, just focus on denying creeps. And the more you deny creeps, the more your opponent gets fucked over. And the more you deny creeps, the more your, the, the, their creep wave pushes towards you, you know? So it's like very good. Same thing for safe lane. The void in this situation, even if the creep waves are equal, he wants to deny them as fast as possible. He doesn't want to auto attack them. And that's, I mean, a lot of people are past that auto attacking phase where you just like, you walk and you just auto attack and I don't know, just push the creep wave and that's really stupid. Okay, another type of lane control is to uh, A click the enemy hero and be within a 400, I think, radius uh, of the creeps and then creeps will follow you. And it's just a good way to, if you're laying against a ranged hero as a melee, it's very good to keep the creeps uh, closer to you so you can last hit the creeps here. And if the ranged creep uh, comes up to here and tries to uh, like harass you, your creeps are going to attack him because he aggroed you. So it's going to be better that way. You always want to have the creeps further away from the enemy hero so you can last hit them and um, far more freely than coming up all the way where she can harass you or she can harass you um, without like losing much HP. Um, you could do this for, for all lanes too, or off lane here, uh, safe lane, whatever. You could do it there for everything. It's just a very nice trick. Also, when you're attacking people under tower and you're running away, if you A click your own creeps, like if you uh, press A, A creep, A click your own creep, the tower's aggro is going to be reset. <clears throat> That's very useful. Like if you're within range here, you A click the creeps here. And the tower stops attacking you even though you're within its range. So that's very important too. Okay, so let's do a recap. Um, if you're a safe lane, try to block the creeps to here and then split uh, split the creep wave and let one creep through. So your lane gets to about here or here and then the opponent's lane pushes. If you're off lane, try to split the creep wave as early as possible uh, so that there's more chances that if your opponent split the creep wave too, that you split it more so the opponent lane still pushes and you're still farming closer to here and you have experience range. If you're safe lane, split it as early as possible too. You can maybe block to here a little bit further out so the creeps don't end up here, but splitting the creep wave is very important for every single lane that you're blocking in. So keep that in mind. It's almost better to split the creep wave than to block the creep wave completely. Uh, another thing is that if both you and your opponent do the aggro trick so what happens at the beginning of the game suppose you block equally and the lane is kind of equal uh, you're aggroing the creeps towards yourself and the opponent is attacking you and aggroing the creep waves towards his side so what happens is like two or three creeps just follow you here and what you do like for example right now uh, what you do you don't lead them toward the tower where the tower can attack them you lead them to here right and then they attack your creeps without tower range or I mean I hope you see what I'm talking about you could do this for off lane too uh, like if you're blocking with silver you see this often the silver pulls the creeps here and he goes like all the way like here and here and here instead of pulling the creeps here by the time they're here just uh, keep the bear running in circles or whatever and keep the creeps here and when the opponent creeps 
when your creeps get here, they're going to kill the creeps a lot slower than if the creeps were under the tower because the tower does a lot of damage. And again, you want to kill the opponent creeps as slowly as possible so the opponent lane pushes and you want to kill off your own creeps as fast as possible so your lane doesn't push. That's... That's about it. Um, I know that a lot of people already know this, but uh, there's a very like there's a lot of ways like there's different levels of which you could take lane control, and if you do it properly, you should have no problem farming against the ranged hero as a melee. Um, that's how that's how I uh, cope with uh, ranged heroes and great harassers like Queen of Pain or Storm Spirit. I just pull the aggro of the creeps, uh, make sure to control the lane, spit the wave, uh, all that stuff. And it's very like you might not notice it, um, like if you've been watching the replays or you watch some pro players, but they all do this. And it's just a very handy tricks that you could do throughout the entire game, not just during the laning phase. You can do this during the entire game. It's just worth more during the laning phase. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, leave feedback if you learned something new, and share this video if you did learn something new, so other people get to get to see it.